All right, everyone, we got a good one today, so listen up. We're going to talk today about how to choose a coding boot camp in 2024. If you've decided to attend a coding boot camp, you are in for a ride. So it's important to make sure that you're as prepared as possible before you make that decision. So I'm not going to waste your time here. If you've been following this channel or if you can click this video, you likely know what a coding boot camp is. Essentially, the pitch is it's an extremely quick way to potentially get into being a developer, whether that's a web developer, a data analyst, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's a fast way to get into tech. You might also be wondering, should I even go to a coding bootcamp in the first place? And if that is you, you need to subscribe to this channel right away because that's what we do here at DevPulse. We are here to help you make an informed decision when it comes to your coding education. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today, we're taking a high level look at the types of bootcamps that you can attend and help you decide which one you should attend. So there's a few key factors when it comes to making this decision. The first one is the curriculum that they're teaching. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The first thing that I recommend everybody do is spend at least 100 hours self-studying and use that time not as like focused time to be like, oh, I want to learn web development. That's great. If you know you want to learn web development like right off the bat, then go for it. Study anyways, spend 100 hours. But if you're not sure which like kind of line of development you want to get into, spend that time doing what I just call grazing. Spend five hours, 10 hours, 15 hours looking into web development. If it's not for you or if you're wondering if there's something better out there, look into working with data with Python or data visualization or machine learning there's so many things that you guys can do with code so it's very important to at least understand the different types of applications that you can build and the different languages and tools that you can use to build those things. So spend some time grazing first and also consider what you're interested in. If you like working with numbers and like the idea of building out business or financial models, look into data with Python. If you love looking at gorgeous websites and always wonder what's going on under the hood, look into web development, specifically front end. If you can't stop playing video games like I do from time to time, look into learning how to become a game developer and like use different gaming engines figure out what these things are all about to some extent to the extent that you can in a short amount of time i know 100 hours sounds like a lot of time but it's not you're going to be spending thousands of hours doing this over the next couple of years so make sure you're at least interested in what you're going to be building. And if you're like me and you like starting businesses and helping other people succeed through those businesses, make sure you're learning about tools that are relevant to that, whether that's using SEO and learning about like Google ads, like in the, on the marketing side of things, in addition to web development, whether that's just becoming a really great web developer so you could build out sites for clients, whatever it may be, there's something for you. So you need to explore and find out what that is. And if you don't care, be careful. But if you insist on coding as a profession, look into what is in high demand and has a good projected growth. But like right now it's data or machine learning. These things change all the time, but there are things that are consistently growing. So look into going that direction and see if it's for you. Either way, the bottom line is make sure that you're spending at least 100 hours studying before you make a decision on a coding bootcamp. The next thing you have to consider is whether you're going to go full time or part time. Now, this is so individualized, I'm not going to spend more than a couple seconds on it. But here's what I recommend. What I think is the best route is to go part-time if it's offered and then study on a full-time schedule because going part-time will allow you to really excel at like the homework side of things the project building side of things because you'll have extra time throughout the day to study build projects and really explore what you're interested in either way though study full-time I don't care if you're going to a full-time cohort or a part-time cohort if you're going to a part-time cohort use that as an excuse to spend extra time studying outside of class the next thing you have to decide is whether you're going to do online or in-person classes for me I would totally recommend doing in person if it's convenient if you live in a major city where there are coding boot camps nearby that you can attend in person that's awesome there's a huge benefit to being side by side with your instructors and peers to build up projects ask questions and have a real human there to help you not just somebody on a screen that may or may not be interested in helping you at least if you go in person they're being paid to be there and they have to be attentive otherwise they're going to be you know in trouble for not being very attentive during class time the next thing you need to consider is the quality of instructors. This can be really hard to determine from the outside of a coding bootcamp, but there's a few things that you can do. Number one is do everything you can to talk with instructors before you attend. So the most obvious way to do this is to find them on LinkedIn, have a virtual coffee with them and ask them questions like, how long have they been in the field? Did they attend this coding bootcamp themselves before they were teaching at it? Are they willing to talk with you in the first place even? 
the attention that the teachers of these boot camps will give you before you attend the coding boot camp can be a really solid indicator to at least tell whether or not the teachers are truly invested in the coding boot camp. The next thing you should look into before or after this is look into student reviews and feedback. Read it. Read the reviews. Bring up the more critical reviews that you've read about. This may sound confrontational, but it's really important. If instructors and admissions have good answers to these questions about what might have gone wrong in that particular situation and what has changed either with the coding bootcamp or their screening process or whatever it was that went wrong, that's a really good sign. The next one, and this is gonna piss a lot of people off and uh, filter quite a few boot camps out for you, but pay attention to the metrics that they show off. I had an interview uh, a couple weeks ago with Michael Law, and he talked really in depth about the difference between vanity metrics and actionable metrics. I think that the number one thing to look out for, like by far, like if the school's website or whatever their marketing material is, is like focused on like vanity metrics versus like actionable metrics. So if they're saying something like, you know, we've graduated 8,000 students and we've been in business for like X money, like that's, that's all honestly besides the point, right? Everybody comes to coding bootcamp for a career change and to get placed. So if they're not leading with you know, like if you go to just like mybootcamp.com and like the first thing you see is like the number of graduates or the number of alumni or things like that. Um, that's usually a telltale sign that something could be amiss on the other half of the program, which is the alumni half. Basically what he's saying here is if you go to a coding bootcamp's website and the first thing that they talk about is like, you know, make a hundred grand in six months, like really gimmicky, not so great, like, sounding things kind of salesy things uh, at least pay attention to that because that can be an indicator of what kind of students they're actually looking for are they looking for students that are on their last dime and just can happen to finance uh, an education that may or may not work out for them you don't want that are they interested in building long-term careers and that's truly what they talk about building a high quality career that can be like cross domain uh, it to some degree uh, over the long term the next thing is career support so what are the job placement statistics and where are they coming from this is kind of a shady topic for coding boot camps because there's no real way to verify the job placement rates of coding boot camps sure there's organizations like CIRR i believe it is i forget the acronym um, that you know actually takes reporting as a third party from coding boot camps and then validates that it's worth looking into but essentially beyond that it's kind of the wild west in terms of job placement rates coding boot camps can do a lot of shady things with job placement rates like say you know if you didn't qualify like by not applying to 10 jobs per week and meeting with your career counselor twice a week you know that disqualifies you from that statistic and even if you don't land a job you're not recorded as not having landed a job because you didn't fit within their qualifications which like to some degree is fair but also skews the data if you guys have been subscribed to me for a while you know this story inside and out i went to a coding boot camp with 11 people and 10 of them ended up signing an nda that said they wouldn't even talk about the coding boot camp because it went so badly i was the only one that didn't sign that nda and it cost me a four thousand dollar tuition i didn't get my refund because i didn't sign it because i wanted to be able to talk to you guys about this and share my experience with you so you can make a better decision so please subscribe to me it's it would really help <laughs> <laughs> the other thing worth considering is what partnerships your bootcamp has with other tech companies in terms of like internships, things like that. So don't rely on this as something that's definitely going to work out. There's all kinds of reasons that an internship would not work out. But if they supply internships from the coding bootcamp, that could be a really good plus for you. Getting that first little bit of experience, even if it's very low paid or not paid at all, is so important and can be extremely valuable. And then whether or not the coding bootcamp has network or alumni networks, if they do, use them, please. It's so valuable to know people in the field and to know people as you're developing and growing into the field. Because in five years, when you want a different job or need a job because you got laid off, hello 2023, uh, you have a network to at least reach out to. The next thing we need to talk about are red flags to avoid. Now, I have a whole video on this one, so go watch it. But 
in short, here's a couple things. First thing is unrealistic job placement promises. So if you're going to a coding bootcamp that claims 98% job placement, eight, even 85% job placement, whatever it may be, that can be a little bit shady. I wouldn't necessarily trust those numbers right off the bat. And once again, this is a vanity metric. So this is something that the coding bootcamp is focusing on that is very vanity driven rather than actionable. What did you actually get out of the bootcamp? Who are you at the other side of the bootcamp? That's way more important than job placements, which can be fabricated to some degree. And then if there's a ton of negative reviews or controversies, you don't have to search very far to find stories of bootcamps that were acquired and then went down the drain. The last thing you have to do, man, is make a decision. So this is the hard part. There's quite a few ways you can go. There's thousands of different boot camps that you can attend literally. So find feedback from real alumni that attended the coding boot camp. Just like you talked to the teachers and instructors, talk to alumni students and see how their experience went. Get students that attended as recently as possible and students that are three, four, five years out, see where they're working and what they're up to in terms of their career. And then the last thing that I just can't understate, it's so cheesy, man, but just trust your gut. If it feels wrong, it is wrong. Just count on it not working out if you don't feel good about it. There's so much I could say about the intuition that I felt about potentially low quality experiences with my coding bootcamp and with other people that I've seen go through coding bootcamps that I would just say, once you start to get that icky feeling, drop it. If you're a week into the cohort, it's better than going all the way through the cohort and losing all your money. Just get out or don't go in the first place if you're looking into a coding bootcamp and it feels wrong. And for God's sake, Please study first. 100 hours, you guys. It's not that hard, okay? It's 25 hour sessions. It's not a big deal. You can do it. If you can't do that, don't go to a coding bootcamp. It's going to be too much for you. All right, guys, that's all I got for now. I know that this was a little bit cut and dry, a little cold, hard, truthy, if you will. Um, I don't mean to be, uh, you know, a stern uh, father figure, I swear. I'm not a boomer. I'm, I'm young and exciting, I promise. But look, I just, I went through this and it was a mistake. I don't think that all coding boot camps are a scam. If you read my comments, you'll see a ton that say that coding boot camps don't even make sense anymore. I disagree. I think there's a ton of coding boot camps that are really good out there. You can get a good education from a coding boot camp and get a really solid start to your career, but you have to be careful. This is not the time to blindly go into a learning experience like it was back in 2019 when there were jobs coming out of people's ears and you could learn CSS and get a six-figure paying job. Those days are over. So you need to be much more careful when it comes to screening, vetting, and validating the quality of a coding bootcamp. So I hope this gives you a good guide to at least start doing that. Good luck. See you later.